Okay, thank you for tuning in. Um, if you're new to my channel, uh, I'm Lawyer James. I'm very interested into cinematography and graphic design. One of the other areas that I am heavily involved with is research when it comes to esoteric and exoteric information as well as diving into spiritual mysteries be, because it's very important to be on some sort of path of attainment. So in this particular video, we're going to be looking at who are the Gentiles and why it's important. Keep watching. Okay. All right. Welcome back. Thank you for tuning in again. So who are the Gentiles? So I've seen several videos um, that's out there. Most of the videos I've seen have been leading from an emotional perspective. What I typically like to do is research um, ancient texts, dealing with it from a scholastic level. Um, so we're going to go into a couple of books in this particular video to try to identify who the Gentiles are and see why it's important. One of the first resources that I'll be um, diving into would be the Septuagint. All right. Now I'll leave links to uh, these resources uh, uh, underneath the like button in the description area. So if you're interested in opening up the investigation on your own or following along, uh, this is to my uh, to my key light here. Um, if you're interested in following along, you'll be able to do that. OK, so I'm going to open up the uh, Septuagint here. And we're going to go to uh, the book of Genesis. Uh, and we're going to look at um, uh, chapter 10 and we're going to start at verse one. So it says, um, now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham and Japheth. And sons were born to them after the flood. The sons of Japheth, Gomor, Magog, Madai and Javan and Elisah and Tobel and Mosak and Theodorus, and the sons of Gamer were Ashkenaz, and Raphath, and Thorgamah, and the sons of Jovan were Elisa and Tharsis, Kittims, Rodians. From these were the owls of the Gentiles divided in their land, each according to his tongue, in their tribes and in their nations. So as we see, uh, now you can actually, if you have like a King James Version uh, Bible or, or something along those lines, you can also go to this same chapter, Genesis chapter 10. In Genesis chapter 10, it deals with the genealogies of the sons of Noah after the deluge, after the so-called flood that took place, right? So then these particular sons started having children and so forth, and then they were being identified. So that's what you find in Genesis chapter 10 is something like a table of nations, so to speak. So now that we know that the descendants of Japheth um, are the Gentiles, the reason why we want to kind of go a little bit into other books is because we had something that happened. Like, for example, um, you have Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? Wait, so you had Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all right? So Isaac <laughs> um, had the twins, right? And then those twins were Esau and Jacob. So the reason why I'm bringing that up is because Esau, there was an instruction. There were some instructions that um, Isaac gave his, his, his sons, and he wanted them not to actually uh, mingle with the um, mingle with certain, certain families and so forth. So um, he mingled with the Canaanites. He, he had children uh, with the Canaanites. And, um, when we go into the uh, so he married one of the sons of Ish, one of the daughters of Ishmael, and he also married some uh, daughters from 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 Canaan, so to speak. So when we go into a book, there's another book. Uh, it's the book of Jasher. And the book of Jasher is referenced uh, in the Septuagint or in the Bible a couple of times. It's referenced in the book of Joshua and it's also uh, referenced in Second Samuel. Uh, there are other books that are referenced in the Bible um, for the true studier and, and seeker of, of knowledge. You'll be able to find those things if you seek and if you knock on the appropriate doors. So a quick tip is the book of Jasher. Now, in the book of Jasher, if we go over to um, if we go over to chapter 90, something very unique happens uh, in chapter 90. Um, 
I like starting at the first verse uh, just to build context, because in the book of Isaiah, it talks about how you should um, look at information precept upon precept. It's Isaiah chapter 28, verse 10. It talks about precept upon precept. Uh, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. And then it talks about here a little and there a little because you have to piece it together like a puzzle because it's fragmented information that we have today because certain um, individuals, once they discovered uh, these particular texts and so forth or had certain individuals translated for them, then there were certain agendas uh, that were set in motion so um, their higher powers uh, were aware and are aware of these particular events that were going to take place. So certain types of energies were placed on individuals to write a certain way. So later on, those who were being called back to the force or being called back to the origin would be able to trace the steps by seeking the old path, if that makes sense. So let's start at verse one, just to build some context, but our focus is going to be um, verse 27 and so forth. But we're going to start at verse one in uh, the book of Jasher. OK, so it says uh, at that time in the fifth year after the children of Israel had passed over Jordan, after the children of Israel had rested from their war with the Canaanites at that time, Great and severe battles arose between Edom and the children of Kittim. And remember, Kittim is a descendant of who? Japheth. We, 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 um, we learned that when we read Genesis chapter 10, verses 1 through 5. So then it goes on to say, and the children of Kittim fought against Edom. OK, now we know that the reason why I started out by saying their war with the Canaanites is because the Canaanites and Edom at, in this particular context here are one people. OK, so then it says, and Abanus, king of Kittim, went forth in that year that is in the 31st year of his reign and a great force with him of the mighty men of the children of Kittim. And he went to Seir to fight against the children of Esau. OK, and Hadad, the king of Edom, heard of his report. And he went forth to meet him with a heavy people and strong force and engaged in a battle with him in the field of Edom, uh, which is Seir. It says, and the hand of Kittim prevailed over the children of Esau and the children of Kittim slew of the children of Esau two and 20,000 men and all the children of Esau fled from before them. And the children of Kittim pursued them and they reached Hadad, king of Edom, who was running before them and they caught him alive and brought him to Abianus, king of Kittim. And Abianus ordered him to be slain and Hadad, king of Edom, died in the 48th year of his reign. And the children of Kittim continued their pursuit of Edom and they smote them with a great slaughter and Edom became subject to the children of Kittim. OK, so now let's move up to. Uh, verse 27, which was the target uh, verse to begin with. So then it says, and the children of Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua. And the Lord gave them rest from all around them, and they dwelt securely in their cities. So they were securely in their cities at this particular time. It says, and it came to pass in those days that Abianus, king of Kittim, died in the 38th year of his reign, that is the seventh year of his reign over Edom. And they buried him in his place, which he had built for himself, and let and Latinas reign in his stead 50 years. And during his reign, he brought forth an army and he went and fought against the inhabitants of where? Britannia and Cernania, the children of Elisha, son of Javan. And Javan is who? He is a descendant of Japheth. These are Gentiles, right? It says, and he prevailed over them and made them tributary. He then heard that Edom had revolted from under the hand of Kittim and Latinus went to them and smote them and subdued them and placed them under the hand of the children of Kittim. And Edom became what? One kingdom with the children of Kittim all the days. Okay. So that's the reason why I wanted to 
build that up by giving you the um, who was Esau. So you'll know who Esau was. Esau was the twin brother of Jacob. All right. And there was instructions and I'll put that somewhere on, on the screen here so you can uh, seek that out. But there were instructions that uh, Isaac gave his, his, his two sons and he did not want them mixing with the Canaanites. Right. So um, Esau rebelled against those instructions and he went and actually uh, made wives out of women from the uh, families of the Canaanites, right? So that's the reason why the context in chapter 90 of the book of Jasher started out by talking about the Canaanites and then immediately went into Edom, Esau, because they were all one people at that particular time uh, in terms of those particular families. So now we see that the Gentiles are not only the descendants of Japheth, but they are also the Edomites, or Edom, and Edom is basically Esau, okay? So we see that though there are families of Esau, but here how it was written is um, all of Edom, which is the descendants of Esau, um, became one kingdom with the children of Kittim all the days, okay? So there in the book of Jasher, we see uh, that it's given us some more instructions there. So I've seen uh, certain videos uh, here on YouTube uh, from various individuals, various groups and so forth. And they kind of go to like uh, the New Testament to explain uh, who the Gentiles are. Sometimes they'll go to the books uh, of the Apocrypha books. Uh, these were particular books that were removed uh, from uh, the, the, the original uh, King James Version Bible. Uh, that was printed and uh, well, it, it was distributed in 1611. But if you were to pick up a Septuagint, you know, those apocrypha books are there. Um, I'll also leave links for the book of Jasher in the description section underneath the like button as well. Now, the awesome thing about this particular book, if you grab this one that I read from, is it also includes two additional books for the price of one. So you'll be getting the book of Jasher and the first volume of the book of Enoch, and you will be getting the book of Jubilee. So that's a, that's a bonus uh, deal right there. But back to what I was saying. So I've seen certain um, groups talk about like the New Testament and describe it, mainly the letters of, of Paul uh, to describe who the Gentiles are. Now, when you go into the into the languages of uh, uh, that uh, or the translations, right? So we have the Tanakh, uh, or the Old Testament uh, being originally written in, in Hebrew, um, and then you have a standardized Hebrew today that, that's the authoritative Hebrew, and then you have the so-called New Testament, which was brought forth in Greek. So the times that you see Gentiles, it has two meanings in the Greek. So it either um, means um, Hellenist, and, and that uh, basically translates to either an inhabitant of a city of Hellas, which is in like what they're telling us today is like the southeast region of Europe, or uh, it can mean ethnos, and ethnos being uh, someone who is part of a, a nation uh, of some like a multitude or a nation, um, and then you have uh, in the Hellenists uh, like a Greek-speaking person. So those are the two uh, basic. Those are the two Greek transliterations of Gentiles in the, in, the, in the New Testament. But we have to go to the beginning to get the appropriate context to find out who the Gentiles actually are. Now, you had these particular families um, who became known as the Israelites. Now, I'm not talking about the land of Israel, which is a state, because nowhere in any of these texts was I able to find a land called Israel. Jacob's name, according to uh, the, 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 the text, the ancient text, was changed to Israel in the English translation. And then some other people came along later on. And, and so and you had things that took place in terms of a land being called that. But there was no land called that. So when I say Israelites, I'm not talking about um, uh, who is known as Jews today in the land of Israel that's called that's been called Israel. I'm not talking about that. We're talking about the families, the descendants of Jacob. They became known as the Israelites, right? 
so you had certain Israelites who were dwelling in certain localities um, around Greek speaking uh, individuals and so forth. So sometimes you see that being the case if they were dwelling in the land of like in a southeast region of Europe, uh, then you will see that being identified that way in most cases and like a Greek speaking person. Basically, it's no different than someone being in the Americas. Uh, or someone being in uh, Cape Town, someone being in China, or whatever the case may be. If you are actually born in a region which is not like of your origin, if you were like scattered and placed into to certain areas, you typically adopt the languages that are being that you're being brought into. If the parents didn't hold fast to their original tongue, maybe it was taken away from them. Uh, maybe something like that happened to where you end up just kind of learning what everyone else knew, if that kind of makes sense. So uh, like, for example, in the Americas, you find people speaking English. Maybe they were doing sign language first and they had to actually learn that language later on. So um, so that's the reason why I wanted to put together this video. Um, like I said, there's uh, links in the description section underneath the like button where you can seek out like uh, the Strong's Concordance where, where you're able to look at something that might be written in English, but then you're able to either get the Hebrew or the Greek um, uh, uh, word uh, that was there after the translation along with those definitions of those particular languages. And it's always important to place yourself within the mindset of the individuals who are actually accredited to these particular texts. And that's why it's important to go and seek out the most original text that you can find. Because somewhere in here, I believe it's Deuteronomy chapter four, verse two, it talks about how you should not change the word, so to speak. So that's what encouraged me to get the earliest form that I could find, which is the Septuagint. There's also other versions, but the Septuagint is being said to be the very first translation from the original languages into the Greek. That's what it's saying. But there's other texts like the Texas Receptus, the Codex Sinaiticus, and so forth. But uh, that's, the, that's what encouraged me to find the Septuagint. And I'll, I'll leave that link in the description section underneath the like button. So in this video, uh, we now know who the Gentiles are. Um, there are certain prophecies that deal with the Gentiles, like, like Japheth, for example. Uh, there was something that was said uh, where it was mentioned that Japheth would be dwelling in the, um, in the tents of Shem. So wherever Shem's lands are, you will find these Japhetic uh, people inhabiting his lands. Maybe they're saying it's their land. Maybe they're known for it being their land if we fast forward to today, but it actually is a land that belongs to the, the, the original uh, uh, Shemitic people. And then it also says that the Canaanites will be their servants. So we just read in the book of Jasher, where we got that breakdown, where it's talked about in chapter 90, it spoke about the Canaanites, Esau, Edom, all becoming that one kingdom. So that is a fulfillment of that particular prophecy and so forth. So if you got something out of this video, make sure to uh, like, like the video. It'll really help out the channel. I'll be doing more of these particular videos without emotion, just straight uh, scholarly information. And, um, you know, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to let me know in the comment section. I do read the comments and I will respond to those comments. And I'll see you in the next video.